Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we have a compilation of our St Ives videos that we filmed in 2020. My name is Sarah and with my husband Andrew we walk around Cornwall. We film our adventures and upload them to YouTube. So what does St Ives mean to you? I love the harbour, I love the little houses and the quaint little streets and it's surrounded by beaches. All of those things will feature in our compilation and mashup of our videos that we filmed during 2020, March to June last year. What better place to start than a breakfast with a view? Good morning St Ives. What's the weather doing? Oh, okay, well, it's not raining. Promising. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're in St Ives. from Trencrum, ground walks near Hales, St Ives and Penzance. It's walk number nine, St Ives historical walkabout. It starts beautifully, it says even before you leave the station car park there's plenty worth looking at. Notably of course the view to Portminster Beach and across to St Ives Bay and Gatrevi Lighthouse. You can't be tired already, we've only just started. But look, it's got to be done. It's copper. It's quite big, isn't it? property here sir? Is this the old post office? Yeah. Yeah. People that used to work in here were incredibly thin. Why? Let me show you. Come with me. Look, they were this wide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is narrow isn't it? How is that even? How does that work? Okay. <laughs> these steps. The author tells us these steps. Good old Bob. This, this was the main road in and out of St Ives until about 1830. So our walk takes us down right now to Street and Pole and the Guildhall. And we're looking out for another Barbara Hepworth sculpture. Oh, I don't think you're part of the sculpture, are you? It's called Duel. Duel? Yeah, like, like a, in a gunfight with cowboys. No, that's D-U-E-L, it's dual as in two of. Ah, why is that there? <laughs> like a couple of giant ears. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. <laughs> what do you think? What I like is although it's abstract and I don't get it, it does make you think. Yeah, because it makes you wonder what was she thinking when she did it. Yeah, and it actually makes me think that I might be able to do that one day. Oh, I'll, I will eagerly await the day. Yeah. I don't know, what would you make that out of? A couple of bin lids, maybe? Put a hole in the middle? Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah. A couple of bin lids? Yeah. I'll throw the bins in as well and we'll call it a load of rubbish. <laughs> don't say that. I did. Barbara Hepworth is one of the darlings of St Ives. You can't say that. That's all right, I think she's dead. <laughs> So 
behind us is Skidden Hill. It's a steep hill. Got its name because the mule carts used to skid as they came down the hill. I love looking in these gallery windows, don't you? I enjoy it. This one over here is really great. Look at that. So proud of himself, look. <laughs> Let me just read this to you, it's glorious. It says, the parish church, and it says, so close to the sea, wrote Lena Bray in St Ives Heritage. The quote goes on, that from time to time, as I recall happening at evening service when I was a girl, a wave would hurtle against the churchyard wall, cascade over the high roof, and ooze down the main aisle. Can you imagine? It's so close to the sea that you get the water coming through. I think that's amazing. what he's talking about. The arch marks the entry to Hicks Court west of the house of George Hicks for tree in 1611 and 1624. Old, isn't it? Look at that. So that's one of these courtyards isn't it? Look at that. It just goes nowhere. Oh, how cute. I love the bunting on the windows. Let's go back through it again. Did low. <laughs> Just fit. I've been coming to St Ives since I was knee high to a donkey and today I've been to places in St Ives that I didn't even know existed. So well done book. I'm enjoying this, it's great. Our walk book now takes us onto the island with St Nicholas's Chapel on the promontory and you've got a choice of which route you take. I um, mean just kind of suggest as long as you wander at, at will. This was an island, and the accumulation of sand between the island and St Ives eventually joined the town and the island together. This so ice is kind of built on sand. Okay, so we're getting a bit lost now. Barrow Road, is that we're, bin? We're looking for Carn Crow Street. Barrow Road. Was the next left, was it? Yeah. Crow Street, down that one my darling. That is so cute. Getting lost in back lanes of St Ives. Apparently this is where the seafaring community lives, the fishermen's houses are all around us. We're heading down here to the pier. I love the pier. A bit blowy today, I hope you can hear me. And the water's in, so all the boats are bobbing around. It looks lovely. Oh,
Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we've come back to St Ives. So we've come back to St Ives. Who wouldn't want to come back to St Ives? But we do have a purpose in mind. We found the most lovely story about Nil Monument and we want to pursue that today and share our adventure with you. There's lovely stories in both our King's England Cornwall book and our Wardlock of Penzance from the 1920s. So we have the briefest of descriptions in the Wardlock book. It says the Nil Monument, about a mile and a half from the old town on a high hill behind Tregenna Castle, is a triangular granite obelisk about 50 feet high, known as Nil Monument. So the monument was built by Johannes Nil. He seems to have had a desire for fame of no ordinary quality and during his lifetime had this granite obelisk erected. It was his intention to be buried in the monument and there is another side to the story which we'll tell you when we get up there. It's really sweet. Have you told them what we're doing today? Yeah. You have? Have you told them what time of year it is? Yeah. Have you told them what's going on with uh, the virus thing? Yeah. Have you told them we're trying to get up to Nils Monument? Yeah! Okay, and we're trying to. Okay, well, let's go. What are we waiting for? I don't know. Okay. Like a checklist. So the plan is to skirt around the harbour, pick up the southwest coast path, and if we're heading to Portsmouth Beach. On a hot day after a steep climb. What a welcome sight. Oh. And it's all about that view. I don't think I'm going to be allowed to enjoy it. Oh, he has stopped. Thinking about it. I might get two minutes. Beautiful. Sarah, I filmed the Balking House so many times in our previous videos, people will think you live here. probably listed, you're probably not allowed to do that. Would be a glorious view to wake up to every morning though, wouldn't it? He's succumbed to the delights of the view. We think getting our walk done. So anybody that knows the climb from Portsmouth Beach along the southwest coast path knows it's quite steep but lovely welcome bit of shade it's quite warm today last of our sunny days for this week so that's why we chose St Ives <laughs> I think I did, did you you I think I got him jumping oh there he is To Nil Monument, and another reason for going up there is that there's reported to be views, really brilliant views. All of the guidebooks say there's fantastic views, and we've chosen the best day to do it, so there should be some fantastic views. Never walked up here before. We think it comes out somewhere near the Cornish Arms, because that's where you take the hill up to the monument. So we'll find out together. Would you mind just walking? Pardon? Would you mind just walking? No. No, just walk. I know what you're going to do. No, just walk. It's fine. You sure that's your feet? I don't like you anymore. You could be Pirate FM's secret sound. <laughs> Is it Sarah's famous farting feet? Okay, so do we follow the lane? We ignore the yeah, junction on the, the right. Left, Oh, it'd be this nice to see. It's narrower and narrower, isn't That's it? That's very true. I wouldn't want to meet a car at the moment. <laughs> Where do we go? So this monument then is called the Nil Monument, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So it's actually named after my favourite football team. What? 
Well, my, my football team is Southampton. And when I was a kid growing up, I always used to think they were called Southampton Nil. Ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> it used to be Liverpool too. Southampton Nil. nil. <laughs> so perhaps they've made a monument for us. <laughs> You're not allowed to paint it in red and white, all right? The curse of Cornish walking trails strikes again. I was just enjoying the quiet. Vlogger's nightmare. We got a, a strimmer's chainsaw. We got a chainsaw today. It's usually a lawnmower or a strimmer. <laughs> or a leaf blower. You've just noticed the topiary. It's a little doggy. It is. That's his nose. Oh, hello. And his ears. <laughs> and his body. And a tail. Okay, so not quite sure where we're going. Don't tell them we're lost. <laughs> but Nil Monument is at the top of a hill and there's still quite a lot of hill that way. If you think logically it's on the very top of the hill. Yeah. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because you can see it from St Ives. I don't want to be a greyhound after, out the traps after a rabbit that we can't catch. It's a darn great granite obelisk. We should see it, shall we? We should see it. If you can see it from St Nicholas's Chapel, we should be able to see it from a road. I would have thought so. These ordnance survey maps, Sarah. Yeah. Make me laugh. Why? They crease me up. Go on, I'd like to see you fold that up at the moment. Well, I am holding it. <laughs> yeah. Hat, bottle, drink. <laughs> oh, show off. Now put it in your bag and zip it up. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You found it? Yes. Oh, boy, boy. No energy. I can't remember the last time I was so pleased to be at the top of a hill. <laughs> it's made me a bit dizzy. <laughs> oh, that must have been the intended entrance for the mausoleum aspect of this monument. For John Nill, 1782. Now let's go and have a look at this view. You can literally see for miles. Oh wow, there's St Nicholas's Chapel! Away down there. I was hoping you'd be able to see it from up here. That's a lovely way to do a circular walk, isn't it? Oh, amazing! I know it's hot and it's the most ridiculous day really for us to do this from a comfort physical comfort point of view but oh my goodness me the views are amazing and i hope they come out on camera stunning The view's incredible, isn't it? It's all about the views, isn't it? Not the DPD van, but the views. I haven't filmed that. <laughs> you've got Nankedra and the moorland behind you, and you've just got the Bay of St Ives opening up in front of you. You can see up St Agnes Beacon, Cambrai. Beyond that, you can actually see Goonhilly today and the Lizard. That is miles away, and Mounts Bay. Fabulous place to come to. Well worth that climb. I'm really glad I made the effort. So we can probably see probably 15 to 20 miles all the way around from up here. Probably not that way because the hills are higher behind us at Nankledra. But okay. That way, yeah, easy. So the lovely part of the story with John Nill, he was obviously quite important in St Ives being mayor and he was a wealthy man. He had this built, this obelisk built and then he moved up to London. Unfortunately he never managed to be buried here which was his wish. However in his will, in accordance with the provisions of his will, the name Johannes Nill or John Nill 
is also linked with a curious quinquennial ceremony. That's every five years. He left certain property to the mayor and collector of St Ives and the vicar directing that every five years £10 should be spent on a dinner and that arrangements should be made for an elderly woman and ten girls under 14 years of age dressed in white to walk in procession with music from the market house to the monument round which they were enjoined to dance while singing the 100th psalm. The will also provided for other legacies including one pound for the services of a fiddler. The commemoration is celebrated every five years on July the 25th. Ives. We're going on a train today. We're actually going to get to catch the train from here in St Ives. I'm so excited. I'm stumbling over my words, but we're going to catch the train from St Ives, get off at Lelant, which is a request stop. So we actually have to ask the driver to stop for us. Then we're going to walk back along the southwest coast path to St Ives. Going to the station. Choo choo! You're excited, aren't you? <laughs> so am I. Hello, good morning. Could we have two singles, please, to just to the land? Press it to the conductor. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. So a request stop is where you actually have to let the conductor know you want to get off. We've never done this before. Do you think you'll actually stop or it's just going to slow down a bit and we've got to jump out? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Four pounds for two tickets. That's pretty That's good. Pretty isn't it? good. Yeah, on probably the prettiest train line in the UK.
make walking trails. That works. My vote is we should do more walks at the end of train journeys. I think we should look into that. What do you reckon? Cornish train walking pub trails. Oh, we got a two cheeks. You obviously like it. <laughs> out of the station here, follow the road for a bit up to Lillant Church and pick up the South West Coast Path back to St Ives. Sarah? I'm a bit worried. Okay. Apparently there's bears on this course. What? Bears. It says watch out for bears. Where? Well, there's a sign there, look. Grr. <laughs> So that's a sneaky sign, Sarah, to the coast path. It's almost a little bit hidden, isn't it? Yeah, but it's important. It's just after the railway bridge. If you were wanting to do this walk, you can't get through always when it's high tide. There's about two hours either side of high tide where you're cut off from the beach and you would have to take the coastal path. But it's low tide today, isn't it, Sarah? So we're gonna use the beach. <laughs> love this beach. The golden sand, it stretches for miles, doesn't it? First time you see St Ives in the distance as well, isn't it? And it's that light, it's, it's phenomenal, so isn't it? special, isn't yeah. it? What have you got? Have you bit the top off a walnut whip? Do you know my secret compartments for? It's my saffron oh, bun. Oh, a sneaky saffron bun! It's nice and dry. Where is it? There it is! Oh, I'm on a tight zoom. I think it's going to wobble. So I was on a tight zoom. But the train is with you all the way! Oh, it's fabulous, isn't it? Oh, and we're in quicksand now. Help. Sinky sand. Help. Very elegantly done there, Sarah. It's Carver Space Station. Train's just pulled in. We haven't been done it since the new development, have we? No, it's all bulldozers and stickers and machines, wasn't it? So this it? is part of the Carvis Bay Beach Hotel complex now. Very impressive, isn't it?
bit of a pole coming out of Carvis Bay. Beautiful hotel. Never know, I might have a cream tea in there one day. We're gonna now go on a footbridge up and over the railway line. We've seen so many times that the train has gone past. It's the same train. I was gonna say we've seen so many trains, but it's the same one. And it's really brilliant. I love it. I think the train will come by again. Yeah, every half an hour, I reckon. Yeah, but now, as oh, right we go now. over, can't see it. No, I think I'll be a no. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy now, don't do that. <laughs> They're all clicking off. <sighs> I wouldn't watch it. Terrible. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what you're sat in, Sarah? Yes. It's the Balking House. Yeah. Do you know what it was used for? It was used as a hewer's lookout from which watch was kept for shoals of pilchards in the bay and the movements of the sailing boats were directed. Nicely done. A semaphore. Yeah, that needs some flags. That means get me a coffee. <laughs> hear that? That's the train. Can't see it. You can hear it, but you can't see it. I love it. Clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety clack, clickety clack. <laughs> Well, I think this has to be one of the most uplifting walks for the soul. You get to be like a kid on the train. You see it weave throughout this video. You've always seen it going back and forth. It's lovely. And you get to go on so many beaches. It's perfect, absolutely perfect. We reckon we've walked about four miles so far. So we're nearly back at the station now. So it's not a bad walk either. I still got my tickets. Can I go round again? <laughs> yes, please.
I really enjoy watching that fisherman, how he gets ashore. It's always fascinated me how they got from their boats to the harbour wall. Well, all was revealed. And don't forget to subscribe. You can join us on Facebook and on Instagram for news about where we've been filming. Or maybe even come over onto Patreon to help support our channel. Thank you very much and thanks for watching. Bye bye.